Hello everyone to our dear professor, Dr. Boliser, classmates, good afternoon. I am assigned to report diagnosing organizations, groups, and jobs. So organizational diagnosis is an effective way of looking at an organization to determine current and desired performance gaps and achieve its goals. In recent years, organizational diagnosis has evolved from a technique used as part of the organizational development process to a significant practice in its own right. An organizational diagnosis includes the activities to improve an organization, usually by comparing the quality of its operations to some standard of high performance and then recommending what changes should be made to bring that quality up to that standard. So the organizational diagnosis may be made for different purposes. These include, number one, enhancing the general understanding of the functioning of organizations. So such a study may aim to enhance the knowledge of human behavior by studying it in an organization or improving uh, the understanding of society as reflected in organizational life. Number two, planning for growth and diversification. So an, an analysis may be necessary for planning growth or expansion. So the organizational diagnosis may reveal the strengths that could be used for development and diversification the weak spots that need to be removed in the new plans, and the precautions to be taken. So several insights may be provided on structure, people, systems, and technology that impact the growth of an organization. Number three is improving organizational effectiveness or planning general improvements. So organizational diagnosis may be used for uh, improving the general efficiency of an organization based on a diagnosis made out of the analysis. The action steps could be initiated in toning up administration and then introducing new management systems and processes. could also be changing personal policies to enhance employee motivation, training, and eliminating unwanted structures. And number four is organizational problem solving. So whenever some departments or units fall or start creating problems, a diagnosis may be undertaken to identify the source of the problem and take corrective action. So a poor performing department with repeated failures of a management system or an organizational process can lead to an organizational diagnosis to identify the root cause of the problem. So to here are the uh, guidelines for successful diagnosis. So number one is ensure the evaluation design that matches the nature and needs of your organization. So one of the best ways to ensure a close match is to involve the members of the organization as much as possible in the design and implementation of the evaluation plan. That highly collaborative and participatory approach can ensure their strong uh, buy-in and participation in the diagnosis. And the number two is integrate organizational evaluation with another ongoing diagnosis in the organization. So 
uh, many organizations conduct various forms of diagnosis as part of their ongoing management activities. Like, for example, uh, as part of uh, continuing employee performance management program evaluations and strategic planning. So integrating your uh, organizational diagnosis with these other activities help members support their other activities and thus save time and energy. And then number three, include a mix of methods to collect information. So for example, uh, review relevant documentation such as just strategic plans, policies, procedures, and reports. Then uh, administer practical questionnaires to collect information anonymously, no, if uh, if it's appropriate, no, and then follow up your uh, questionnaires with various interviews. So interviews might be closed or open ended, and with individuals or groups. And then number four is place high priority on capturing learning during diagnosis. So learning involves gaining new knowledge, skills, or perspectives. So learning is not merely finding new things to do. So the best forms of learning from diagnosis are those focused on solving problems of achieving your organizational goals. And the number five is Share learning from diagnosis as soon as you have them. So there is a tendency to put off acting on the results or conclusions from diagnosis until it has been finished. So it is better to have a timely sharing uh, of the results. And you can make ongoing adjustments to the diagnosis to ensure that it remains to have high quality results. So in preparing the organizational diagnosis, there are two important reminders to take. First is adjust uh, for, for your personal biases. So of course, all of us have biases or natural ways to automatically perceive and interpret things in the world, including how we come to uh, conclusions about them or to that certain situation. So we are often not aware of those biases. So despite the significant role they play in what we see and do not see, biases rather, uh, can uh, significantly affect of what we conclude as being essential and unimport unimportant in an organizational diagnosis. Then second is don't design your diagnosis plan alone. So instead, uh, form a small team of members to share their expertise, time, and attention to planning the diagnosis. So the best team uh, should include members of the organi organization that is being diagnosed. So train the team members about the basics of organizational diagnosis and be clear about their roles during the diagnosing uh, process. So as you and your team answer the following questions to design your plan, no, um, you need to fill in this template for designing your organizational diagnosis plan. So number one, who are the primary audiences? So is the information just for the board members, for the management? Does it include the employees, the investors, or customers? And then um, what are the primary purposes of the organizational diagnosis? So uh, the purpose of the diagnosis might be to answer specific management questions and uh, problems that have are, have uh, already present in your organization. And then number three, what types of information are needed 
and then from what sources should the information be collected so it could be collected from uh, individual employees from your customers no or from your uh, groups of employees no attempt to get information from people in the focus of your or of your uh, diagnosis and those who are most affected by that area and then number five what are the best methods to collect the information so it can be through uh, documentation to uh, questionnaires ba, or interviews or it or does your um, diagnosis uses the assessment some assessment instruments and then what must context uh, sensitive considerations to be made so each organization has unique features such as your culture you no know, the nature of leadership or uh, the environment the nature of programs and services you know? so how do these features influence on how you will gather your information and then uh, what is the best timing you no know, for getting the information so do you need to have a specific date uh, are there uh, certain problems that you need really need to address like asap like right away so how often can you get access of the information you no know? how long will it take to collect the information so you need to take into consideration of that and then who should collect the information so make sure that the person or people in charge should be highly objective and have a low bias during the diagnosis and then how will you analyze the information so analysis usually includes comparing uh, the results of the assessment to the standard suggested by the uh, diagnostic model which will also be tackled later on and how will you make interpretations and generate recommendations so your recommendations will likely be about the kinds of activities uh, that the organization needs to do to achieve common goals and then how will you report the information so uh, it's, uh, how the diagnosis the results of the diagnosis are reported depends on the nature of the audience and the decisions that must be made about the evaluation now should you test the design of the diagnosis before you use it with uh, many employees and what ethical considerations must be made this is important so uh, uh, you need to take note of uh, the, the the things or the information that you uh, gathered during the diagnosis so is it appropriate you no know, to that the participants or the or the like the in the entire employees the entire company should know about it or not no so there are some informations that we, that we need to 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 disclose no and then if so uh should we get uh an, a consent no so that's that's uh number 13 what ethical considerations must be made so implement the diagnosis plan so how to implement the diagnosis plan so here's a simple flow of what it should look like um, number one of course announce the evaluation to members of the organization so um, the chief executive officer or the board of trustees no should announce the diagnosis to the employees so they should mention uh, its purpose and benefits how the employees are expected to participate in it uh, when they will get the results of it and how they can share their ongoing feedback about how its recommendations will be implemented and also who are the members of the team the project team especially the members from the organization and who's the primary contact person if they have uh, further any further questions and then special care should be given to ensure sufficient time for 
reactions, uh, questions, and suggestions. So, if possible, uh, during the distribution of the information or the memo, um, it should not be like, okay, I, I informed you that tomorrow we will have the we will start the diagnosis. No, um, it should have like an ample time for them to have to to make to have the employees. It's uh, have their reactions or questions or suggestions regarding on it. And then carefully prepare those responding to the diagnosis. So you should not start simply by asking them for input. So consider the following guidelines. So the management should uh, introduce the people in charge of diagnosis and then tell participants what is expected of them during the diagnosis. And then contact each um, participant before conducting any uh, interview interviews and then review proper organizational documentation before contacting anyone. And then share the findings and recommendations from the diagnose from the diagnosis using the assessment tools and diagnostic models. So, what are these uh, diagnostic models? So, a diagnostic model allows identifying reliable data to help the organization identify its strengths, uh, deficiencies, opportunities uh, for improvement, and target intervention strategy. So, here are some commonly used diagnostic models. So, the six-box model and the sharp image diagnosis model. So both models uh, involve these three processes, the data collection, of course, the feedback of the data to the client system members, and the action planning based on the data. The main difference is that uh, the six-box model is a predefined, straightforward, and easy to use. And it's also easy to understand model with predefined areas and questions to focus the analysis. I think there's already a template here, and they can uh, can just uh, look for it. I think it's already available in the internet. And in contrast, the sharp image diagnosis model is more elaborated, uh, requiring organizational development practitioners or OD practitioners to develop customized models to implement the diagnosis intervention. So in diagnosing at the organizational level, there must be a clear understanding of the organization's general environment and industry structure. Then uh, check, check on its design components, such as its technology and human resource systems. For the group level, this is the second level of diagnosis. So at this level, we need to look closely at, at its, uh, the organization's culture and know how the communication flows and then its team functioning, the group composition and norms. And it should, should also examine uh, the team's effectiveness and quality of work life and group performance. And lastly, the individual level, this level diagnosis, the characteristics of individuals working on a specific job. So this involves the levels of skills, maturity, education of each employee, and then it's uh, their experience. And it must also be included during the diagnosis of the, uh, of the skill variety. You know, I think there's, of course, there are... Um, there are specific uh, job descriptions to each employee and there's there's also non job a non specific job uh, uh, non specific job descriptions also and then task identity of their jobs their job evaluation you no know, and then their job satisfaction and their personal development
in conclusion, as part of the organization, especially if you are those uh, people that have the authority to push through organizational diagnosis, the main purpose of why we're doing this is, of course, to know the organizational gaps and be able to address these issues to proper authorities. And this also helps us what appropriate interventions should be taken to achieve our organizational goals. So that ends my presentation. I hope that you have learned something from this discussion. Again, this is Joyce Marisomatra, and thank you so much for being attentive.